morning, everyone. I was trying to see if, like, I could find myself going live, but I just got the heads up that I'm live. Oh, yay. <laughs> good morning, everyone. I hope you're having a good Wednesday so far. As you know, I'm going to start early, like I typically do. Um, but, I mean, from my attire, you can guess what we're doing today. Meow. Meow, meow. Meow, meow, meow. <laughs> I was very tempted to add on little whiskers, but um, thought better not to. <laughs> not today. But I've got all of our goodies in front of me, and I'm excited. The cats might take a little bit of a... They might make an appearance. I don't know though. Poe's over in his corner, sleeping. <laughs> oh, it's difficult to hear me. I am hearing. Let's see. Let's see if moving this forward is better for you guys. How's this? Good morning, Tubit. It's good to see you. I'm increasing my microphone level, so we should be good to go now. We're gonna just wait three more minutes. Um, if anybody is live with us, let us know how your week has been so far. Did you guys enjoy Minecraft yesterday with Dr. Dejana? She's awesome. Real life mermaid. My personal request for her is I need to know about her mermaid life. I need to know more about oceanography and aquatic biology because I'm infinitely fascinated by that and I'm a big water baby as I love to say oh my my mic my camera was a little dirty gonna wipe you guys off there for a little bit um thank you thank you for the compliments about the ears yes and her assistants yesterday were super super awesome too i can't forget them and then on monday we had michael in the terranium which was super cool i actually had thought originally of doing that class for myself um but I am not the greatest with my thumbs. I don't have the greatest screen thumb ever. Um, oh yes, a Q&A, two bit. I will be on that. If you want me to, I would love to do a Q&A with her, even if it's virtual. And we um, do a little bit of a back and forth, maybe through Zoom, uh, maybe with Dr. Leah Haynes as well. I don't know if you know a lot about Dr. Leah. Um, I'm about to come off as the biggest fangirl ever, but she's phenomenal, intelligent, well-spoken. There's so many things I could rattle on and on about her. But Leah has worn many hats throughout her lifetime, and it would be awesome to get to know her better through that, right? Ah, Tubit, you have heard of Dr. Leah Haynes. I wonder. I wonder how you'd know that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think getting to know our team better sounds like something pretty cool that we can all accomplish together. And we've got about one more minute before I'll get everything running today and do our little hellos and thank yous. I hope you have your materials. If not, no worries, no worries. I'll go through them while we're talking this morning as well. In addition to potentially maybe having some alternatives, she says, nervously, but it is 10 a.m. on Wednesday, and good morning, everyone. It is Kate again with the Two-Bit Circus Foundation. <laughs> um, as I said, my name is Kate, and today we're going to be showing you how to make catapults. That's right, your very own personal ca catapult. I broke my catapult. I'm so sad now. Oh, no, it's fixed. Um, so I'm going to be teaching you that, and you can actually find this project in our project playbook. Um, the exact page numbers are, I think it's like the first project that you come by. So I think it's page three or four, just very early on. You can't miss it. Um, and it's a pretty simple, relatively simple activity that you can do with multiple ages. We start this one off by suggesting that you um, start off with first graders. So this can encompass everybody and anybody and is a great fun little activity to do with everyone and yes as Tupid is reminding me now you can download the playbook for free the links below down in the chat 
and all of our um, affiliates are all down there as well. And as always, thank you to Vans for making sure that we're still here to stream to you guys Monday through Fridays at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. But I'm going to go over what we need today to make these meow catapults. Meow, meow. As you can see, I made one last night. Um, this was this is a bit of a prototype, um, and <laughs> you heard this morning I snapped my catapult. So the tension is a little different on this one in particular. But we're gonna make one today all together. So what you're going to need for this activity today is seven, and I think I've got eight in my hands though. Seven popsicle sticks or tongue depressors, anything that you have that is um, a sort of tough, slightly bendable material. You don't want it to be super bendy because you definitely want some tension in there. You're going to need rubber bands or something that can tie things together so a small elastic will also work. Some construction paper. You only really need one sheet because that's how I made this little guy right here, my little bucket any color that you would like. And I also have with me our lovely little buckets for us to shoot our little cotton balls in later, as well as tape. You do need tape, tape or glue, any, any sort of adhesive material you have. And, um, well, I'll just bring over my whole color kit to show everyone here. <laughs> do you think I like to color? I'm not sure. Um, so I brought my color kit as well because we can decorate our little catapults and give them ears and I'll show you how to do that later as well as making our little cotton balls into lots of flying kitties. Yes, I am definitely helping teach Poseidon this class today because oddly enough Poseidon is the Greek god for the ocean and the Greeks and the Romans were one of the um, ancient civilizations that was known for using catapults. So I'm going to give you a little bit of background on that. So before we get ex started on this activity, I'm going to give you a little bit of background on catapults and show you some. Um, I've drawn some graphs for you guys as well as show you some on um, a website that I found that looks really, really awesome. So catapults are created from the Greek words kata, and pultos. Kata means downward, and pultos means a small circular shield. So when they put catapultos together, it actually meant a shield piercer, because that's exactly what catapults would do. They were extremely sophisticated for their time um, as a machine to often get warlike things done, but they were used for multiple reasons. So there are technically five different kinds of catapults that you can have, though there are three big generic categories. The first one is the ballista. As you can see here, ballistas work on torsion, and I'll tell you a little bit about that later, I promise. And then there is the magonel, which is what everybody sees as our typical catapults. That's called a magonel. And my personal favorite, the trebuchet. Yes, the fancy, fancy trebuchet. And then within those three larger categories, there are two other subcategories. So under the ballista, there's also the springles and an onager underneath magonels. And what those two little different names um, define the different catapults by is like size mainly. So the smaller categories are tiny compared to their larger um, counterparts. So we'll start with the ballista. The ballista was originally created by the ancient Greeks and Romans. It was to shoot like a crossbow. So they originally had a crossbow, and I'm sure everybody knows what a crossbow looks like. So originally there was a bow and arrow, right? You had to pull everything back, hold that tension, and release. And then you would get your prey if you were hunting. And then a crossbow was invented where you could crank back that string that you pulled with your fingers instead in a bow and arrow, you could crank it back with a little turning machine and that would give extra power and extra heft behind your spear and it would shoot very accurately and very powerfully. So they love little crossbows, but little crossbows don't do anything against a giant castle, right? I mean, it's made out of stone. That thing is huge. So they looked at a tiny crossbow and decided that, hmm, I should probably experiment and test it out and make a bigger crossbow. 
So a bigger crossbow turned into the ballista. So it shot arrows, it shot darts, it shot stones at people. It was extremely, extremely strong. Next would be the Maginel, which is the traditional crossbow, uh, traditional catapult that we are used to. And it looks just like this, just like our little catapult that we are building today. And the biggest difference between a Maginel catapult and a Ballista catapult is that this one has a little bucket to hold your stones or other things in. Instead of just putting them into a chute, as you see right here with this spear, and then just shooting it off. Didn't really work for everybody because of the fact that some of the cons was that it was difficult to build and it also was limited to hitting only what you could see versus the Maginel, which could go a lot harder, a lot faster, but it was extremely, extremely inaccurate. And that's because when you spring load this um, catapult holder, when it's spring loaded away and you use that kinetic energy and it turns into velocity, it was going to just fly anywhere, dependent on what you put inside your little basket. And just so you know, manganon, which is the short Latin word for manganel, which we got that term from, means engine of war. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun. Oh, and last but not least, I'm going to give you a brief overview of a trebuchet. So the trebuchet one is my favorite, like I said, and it works on this really, really interesting 90 degree angle that it's got right here. And instead of launching something, it actually flung something because it had a, a sack of some kind on the opposite end of the catapult right here where the basket was, but instead of being on top, it was on bottom and it would hang down so that you would get the extra kinetic energy and velocity from even that sack building up potential energy and then throwing it and flinging it as far as you can. <laughs> I do like Starks on its comment. She said, making a giant version of small things is an underrated design technique. Yeah, yeah, I think we should try to make more small things into giant things and see where we can go from there. That sounds super cool. So the trebuchet, oddly enough, even though the creation of the catapult is technically given to the ancient Greeks and Romans, we have written down that the trebuchet was actually created by the Chinese in 300 BC, which technically would be the first ever catapult. But I'm not a historian, so we gotta ask our historian friends, who actually created the catapult in the first place? Was it the Chinese with the trebuchet? Or was it the Greeks and the Romans with their balisas and spring balls? I don't know, I wanna do more research on that. But the cool thing about the trebuchet is that it launched in a little bit of an arc to whatever direction it was heading towards. And just so you know, so the trebuchet was created in 300 BC and it only ended up coming to Europe in 500 AD. So that means 800 years passed before it went all the way from Asia all the way to Europe, which is so cool and so crazy. Now, the big things that I wanted to mention while I'm still talking about our lovely little catapults here is the difference between the Ballista, the Maginel, which are considered torsion machines, and then the Trebuchet, which has traction. Now, they sound very, very much the same. Torsion, traction, uh-oh, how do I know the difference? Well, my friends, if we can put our hands together and wring your hands like you're twisting a towel, just like this. If you're twisting and twisting a towel, that's torsion. So torsion, we can think of twisting. Twisting is torsion, that's twisting force. Traction, on the other hand, is when energy is used almost by sliding against something. So we slide something back, that's traction. Traction is this, this is torsion. Torsion, twisting, traction, almost like treading on the back, the, your bottoms of your feet. That's why the bottoms of your feet, the soles, sometimes are called treads because of traction, treading, all that stuff. Just little fun facts that I know. So the trebuchet was a non-torsion machine which made it absolutely 
completely superior to all of its predecessors, so much so that there is a famous one. That is right, my friends. I found out there is a famous trebuchet. Oh, we have a visitor today. Poseidon has graced us with his presence. Hello, Poseidon. Are you going to build catapults with us today? He sure is. <laughs> so, as I was saying, there was this amazing, amazing, super famous trebuchet from England. Oh, yes, the cat's back. He's back here. It was created by Master James of St. Oh, goodness. Buddy, buddy, move. All right, I'm so sorry about that, friends. So, this famous trebuchet is called War Wolf. Crazy, right? It was created by Master James of St. George, who was the chief engineer of Edward I. It is considered the most powerful and the most famous trebuchet that has ever, ever existed. I didn't know, but that's really, really awesome. <laughs> so, most catapults are gonna go anywhere from very close to you, like a slingshot made out of rubber bands in your hands. <laughs> you guys are so funny. I'm catching the chat. I got a little Monty Python reference and I love them. Yes, I won't fling my cat, I promise. The catapult was not meant to be cat flinging. I think this is a little too small for Mr. Poseidon. Not sure though. I could fling treats at him though. We might want to play with that later, so keep that in mind. <laughs> And last but not least, my little fun fact for you all about catapults is catapults, surprisingly enough, were the first weapons that were used for biological warfare. Now, I know I used a lot of big words there, mom and dad, and that just means that sometimes when they didn't want to fling rocks or sometimes hot coals or anything like that, sometimes they might take people and fling them over. I know that's not great. That's not a happy thing to talk about this morning, but to all my nerds out there, think of that scene of, I think it's the, it's not Helm's Deep, but there's a big war, war, excuse me, war that happens in Lord of the Rings. I think it's in the second film. They would, and you can see the orcs getting launched over. Yes, just like Stark said, medieval times they did launch dead animals and peoples into castles to cause disease. That's right. So that is the first instance of biological warfare. So they didn't only use catapults to actually inflict physical, true damage. They also used catapults to spread uh, disease. <laughs> Sad. Oh, and I just got a confirmation that that fight is Helm's Deep and it is in the Two Towers. So for all my friends out there, if you're looking for a cinematic version of what a trebuchet biological warfare looks like, let's go to the Two Towers, Battle of Helm's Deep. And yes, Stark's on it. The trebuchet is called War Wolf. Now, I couldn't find any information as to why it was called a War Wolf, but there we go. Now, before we start building our little catapults, I wanna show you a very quick website that I found. I actually found some really fabulous websites researching about catapults, but this one in particular has wonderful, wonderful animations of catapults. So. The first one that you see, oop, I gotta move over, right here, oh, that way, here, this one, this top one right here. This is what we call a mangonel catapult. That's what we're building today. That's what this looks like. So you can see the potential energy being held in the basket where the ball is, and then once it hits the center mark at the 90 degree angle, it becomes kinetic energy. It actually becomes kinetic energy when it's moving. But the kinetic energy is passed into the ball so that when it hits the center pillar, it uses velocity to keep flying and heading towards its target, which is super, super cool. The bottom one right down here, this animation, is a trebuchet. My favorite that I was talking about earlier. So this trebuchet is a great animation example of how they work. So as you see, the trebuchet, oh, trebuchet right at the bottom, it has a sling on the bottom. So the little rock is held in that sling and they use a counterweight sometimes, which is called a counterpoise trebuchet, to 
fall down and when the gravity pulls down on that counterweight, it flings the sling all the way up and over. There's also a traction trebuchet, which uses people power versus the counterweight. So it's exactly the same idea, but people push down the opposite end of the trebuchet instead of a counterweight being there. Thank you for the nice comments, everyone. But yes, I think flinging treats might sound like an idea for my catapult today. Well, now that you've seen some animation options um, of what our catapults look like, let's build one, right? It's about time. I've talked for a really long time, so it's now to actually get down to building it. What you're going to need first is going to be those five popsicle sticks. One, two, three, four, five. You're gonna stack them all on top of one another, just like so, like I have right here. Oopsies, all oh, my pages are freaking out. And you're going to take two rubber bands and tie one on each side. Now, it can be any color that you want. I'm gonna use different colors than the ones that I used yesterday. So, we're gonna tie these rubber bands together so that they create our little middle bar at the 90 degree. So it fits it right at 90 degrees. Boop, boop, boop. Now, if you don't know much about degrees, that's perfectly fine. A 90 degree angle will always be just like so, perpendicular to a second line. So if you ever see a line right in the middle, something goes straight, going straight up, this little area whoop, inside here that makes the L, that's a 90 degree angle. Half of that would be 45. And of course, the full flat, if we were to lay my arm flat, would be 180. And if we went all the way around and back to the top again, that is 360 degrees. That's why whenever somebody has a cube that they can look all around, it's called a 360 degree view. Sometimes they'll use that. Um, but today we're only gonna be worried about 90 degree angles. So straight up and down. If you look at the corner, oh, a corner of your wall, that's a 90 degree angle. It should be, at least. <laughs> so, okay, we are here. We have our five popsicle sticks, tongue depressors, whatever sort of solid material that you have tied together to create our bar. Which leaves two other sticks left. Uh-oh. Well, this is going to build our little lever. And this is super, super easy. There's no gluing, nothing involved. So what I need you to do first is to put the two popsicle sticks together, just like so. And you're going to grab a another rubber band, so this should be the third one that we're using, and you're going to tie them together as close as you can to the bottom. Ooh, Stark's on it. Be right back eating five popsicles. That sounds amazing. Unfortunately, I did not stock up with popsicles. I have coconut ice cream instead because sadly I am lactose intolerant, but it is delicious. Ooh, it is so good. Okie dokie. So, as you can see, I've moved my rubber bands as close to the end as I can. Now, the reason why you want that is so that you have room to insert your popsicles as much as you'd like to create the angle that you want. Again, we're talking angles. And by create, what we're doing right now is almost creating a 45 degree like angle. Remember, cause 90 is straight up and down. So since this one is about halfway in between, it's about 45 degrees. Now you wanna play around with the popsicle sticks for a little bit to find out what placement, should they be further down, should it be more up here, to see what kind of spring you can get when you're flicking the catapult. Because that's, what, that's the movement we're gonna be using to make sure that it springs. You're gonna be pulling back on here and launching it. So as you can see, it's not as bendy as some other materials may be. And that is a-okay because it is not about this particular arm having a full range of motion because we are making a mangonel. And the thing that distinction, distinct, 
effectively makes it a mangonel is the bucket. And it does have to have a stop at some point where the kinetic energy no longer exists in the catapult and instead it turns into velocity into the item that you used like rubber bands to fling out of it. I used a lot of big words, my friends. So what I'm trying to say is that when you want something to move in this particular type of catapult, we cannot let this little stick here be able to move all the way around because then the item inside this bucket won't fly out. It'll just stay and more often than not, it's probably just gonna fall back down on the ground face flat. Versus if you give it a place to stop, then when the moving object hits that stop, it's going to launch. Launch the item from in here out of it. And that's what we want. And you need that energy transfer in order to get the right item to fly. And yes, yes, the potion doctor, you are right. We can test to figure out the best angle. That's right. So as you can see, although I have a broken, broken catapult, which is okay, I'm going to fix it with my rubber band right there to make it more solid. And let's see, how is, that's not a good angle, see? There's no room. This isn't a good angle. You don't want it to be too close because I have nowhere to pull back my bucket and let it go. It, it'll just stay flat like this. This is no good. So we don't want something small. Hmm. Let's see if we can experiment or try a slightly larger angle, like so. Not too big, not quite 45. Let's see how this one flings. I'm gonna go get some cat treats now. Excuse me. <laughs> oh yes, and I just got a very pleasant reminder. I hope I didn't misspeak. But energy is always transferred. It can neither be created nor destroyed. Does anybody know what rule that is? Yes, and Holly the Jolly Rancher is right. Math is something you definitely need to know to do this. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I put a little treat in here. As you can see, Mr. Poseidon is ready. He's ready. Let's see if we can launch this baby. Let's go, ready, set, woo! Okay, that did not fly very far. I don't know if you could see the tiny little treat, but it bounced off of, uh... okay, it's right there, Bubby. He found it on the ground. It didn't fly very far. It flew maybe about five inches onto the top of my treat box, trick or treat box right here and bounced right off. So that's not a good angle for the catapult either. That's not going very far. All right, well, let's see if we can get a larger, a bigger angle, figure out where we want it to be. Mm. By the way, when you do find the angle that you want, you want to attach a I believe we're on number four, a fourth rubber band around the placement of it so it holds. So what I do, <laughs> he's looking for more treats. There's no treats yet, I'm still working. <laughs> I wrap it, as you can see the white band right underneath the white to give it an end. And then I actually twist the rubber band like so and hook it, oh boy. On the bottom stick, remember rubber bands are super springy, so don't be scared, okay? Mm, there we go. Okay, see? I made a little X so I can hold it where it is, and I can actually experiment with my angle. Okay, there we go. I think this angle is a little bit more bendy. Ooh, yes, I like this. This is good, yes. Okay, so I've made a slight adjustment, my friends. And let's see if you like this too. So I know how I told us to tie both catapults together, the pixie stick, I mean the popsicle sticks to make a angle, but it looks like I actually get a little bit more spring in my step if I just tie one. So I know I'm totally going off the book, 
But see if you like this a little better. This is working for me a little better personally. I'm getting a little bit more of a spring, as you can see, more of an expressive spring right there so that I can launch my cat treats further. I hope you know I'm going to make a game out of this. Um, I did forget to mention that usually the first thing that we do whenever we're experimenting is that we do little doodles. We do what some people call, um, why do I keep thinking blueprints? That is the wrong word. I feel, I feel very inadequate right now. <laughs> but you can start creating your sketch designs and ideas out with different materials. You can try different materials, see what works better. Um, whether that be you find that using, um, instead of rubber bands, somehow glue works better. Or maybe uh, you like using two pencils to create your fulcrum instead. And that's better. Blueprints! That's the word I'm looking for, blueprints. So most inventors like us over at the 2-Bit Circus Foundation and scientists, anybody, they will draw little blueprints to make up little different designs. So instead of making five of these in person, they'll draw them out and figure out what works best for them. So of course, we're only partially there with our catapult. We're not quite finished yet. So it's time to make the basket, right? Because the basket is the most important part of a mangonel. You can't call it a mangonel without a basket. So you also will need scissors. And mine have disappeared. I don't know how or when. Oh, nope. They're right here. What I like to do to create this really, really, well, even basket is that I will take one of the shorter ends, as you can see right here, and I will cut one flat strip out. Now, keep in mind, you gotta fit your item in here. So make sure that it's not too small, that it can't hold your item, but that it's not too big either, and it takes over your entire catapult. That would be no good, no good, my friends. Oh, he is back. He wants more cat treats. Is that right, Mr. Poseidon? A lot of people are really going to be excited to watch you try to catch these cat treats. Yes, I love your idea, Starks, on it. Edible catapults. So instead of, like, we can play games, so instead of throwing, like, a goldfish for somebody to catch in their mouth, we can start playing games with, like, catapults. It could be a great party game. Who knows? Maybe when we're back and we can all socialize with each other again, we should create uh, catapults to uh, start flinging different foods at each other to see who can catch it and be the most skilled. Yes, you can definitely make a plan to test out different ideas. Um, deep Ocean Doctor. Well, I said Depeche Mode earlier. You can see where my brain is at. Yes, that's right. You can make a plan and test out different ideas. I actually highly suggest that you do because you never, you will never know what different things you can discover. Happy accidents. I like to call them happy accidents. For example, we had a happy accident today. Look here, this is the way that I did my first catapult, and it was actually very tight, and it was very hard for me to launch it. And as you can see right there, it just broke because there was too much tension in between the pieces, so it snapped, unfortunately. But a happy accident that ha happened while we were experimenting or creating was the fact that I discovered that if you just tie one side, you actually get more of that spring that we're looking for. So I like to call them happy accidents. Other people will call them different things. Ooh, I see that somebody is making ones with markers and hair ties. That's perfect! Those are exactly materials that you can use. I think as long as you have something solid to put the item on and then you have some form of an elastic to give you that potential energy then you'll be good yes I love happy accidents as well so I made my little bucket and I'm sorry if you didn't see me complete it but all I did was I took the width side of the construction paper cut about two inches in but remember to compensate for whatever you're flinging so if it's a cotton ball you might want to make it a little deeper like one of these. You want to make sure that the item can fit in there, but doesn't get stuck. 
Because remember, when you fling it, and if it gets stuck, it won't fly out, which would be no good. No good, no good, no good. And then I took extra paper because I didn't need all of it to roll my little circle to create the bottom of the basket, as you can see right here. And then it's just taped together. There's no specific way to tape anything, just as long as it makes that complete basket that you need. Next, you're going to obviously attach your basket to your mangonel, so it can be a real mangonel. What I found experimenting last night was that if I put the basket on top of the popsicle stick that I want it to be on, like so, ooh, and then I just put a piece of tape flat on the popsicle stick and hug it around the basket, it usually stays. You might want a couple of different pieces just to make sure that your mangonel basket doesn't come flying off of the mangonel itself. So ta-da! That's gonna be your happy little catapult. I brought my coloring materials out here this morning because I wanted to decorate mine too, and I highly suggest you do that to yours. And of course, I'm going to make it into a cat-themed one, so I've gotta make ears. So I'm gonna make ears for my basket next, if you wanna follow along. All you do is that extra piece of paper, because we don't waste anything, you're gonna cut two little tiny triangles out of it. One tiny triangle! Two tiny triangles. So I've got my two tiny ears. Tiny, tiny. And I'm going to use the same tape and tape them onto my basket right on the edge. So it looks like it's a cat basket. So there you go. There's one ear. Oops. Oh no! My ear! My ear disappeared. Another happy accident? <laughs> yes, I agree. There are so many games that you can play with this. Um, a super easy one that we're all kind of used to. Do you remember football? Like finger football? Uh, finger football is has the same idea as the catapult does. It's about launching a stationary object into a different direction to score a goal of some kind. Cat bowling, Angry Birds Live with catapults. Oh, that's a good idea too. Angry Birds Live. I know that's very popular. I don't know much about it, but I do know that there's catapults involved in it because you have to fling the bird, right? So if you have to fling the bird using a little basket on the end and then there's a weight on the other side, then that is a trebuchet. But just the fact that you're using a slingshot, slingshot is still a catapult. So yes, Angry Birds is full of catapults. Okay, so. I've added two little ears, so now it's a cat basket, and I'm going to take some markers and decorate the rest of mine, because who doesn't love a little art to cheer up your day? And that's why we love teaching everyone STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. And why is that? Because all of those elements play along together so well. They absolutely do. One of my favorite science lectures, um, speeches that I've ever watched was Dance for Your PhD. And what they did was that different doctors, um, different students who were trying to get their doctorate taught scientific principles by using dancers and choreographing them which is really awesome. So instead of just imagining what atoms look like, you could watch people interact like atoms do. And for people who are visual learners, like myself, I'm also kind of tactical, so I like getting my hands dirty. It was super great to see a science principle that I only see on paper or maybe an animation on a screen to see real people doing it. It was very awesome. And creative learning is so important. So I've added a little, little whisker and nose right there. I'm gonna add more decorations on here, like little paw prints. Oh, although it looks like my paw prints might be a little light. Now, my favorite way to draw paw prints is to draw little, um, like kind of cartoony mushroom heads, almost like a Smurf hat. And then I draw four little paws on top so that they look just like so. So I'm making my cat treat a pult. Ah, oh, I should market this. 
Nobody's take it. <laughs> oh, Stark's on it has never played or heard of finger football. Well, I don't know if you're a big Marvel fan, but if you want to watch some superheroes play it, um, Iron Man and Nebula play it at the beginning scene of Endgame. It's usually when you hold your fingers just like this to make a goal, um, the goal post like you do in f football for a touchdown, and you fold a piece of paper into a triangle, triangle shape of some kind, the football, and then you have to hold the triangle piece of paper like so, and you have to flick it over the other person's goal post to get a score. At least that's what I interpret as football. I know there's many, many different versions of it. Um, next week, I'm actually going to teach us a fun version of telephone that's going to go along with our class that day. Oh, I agree. I agree with Starks on it. What is Big Nate Holly the Jolly Rancher? Oh, yay! Yay, more love for dance for PhD! Yes, okay. Seriously, my friends, Google that. If you have not seen it, Dance for Your PhD is phenomenal. It really explains a lot of concepts well. And I think that if we can possibly look into options like that for math and other different topics, I think we could find a way to get everybody on the same page because we're just discovering that everybody learns a little differently, right? And that's okay. And it doesn't make you any less smart than somebody else because you have to learn things a different way. Find out whatever works for you. Oh, Holly the Jolly Rancher is telling us that Big Nate is a book series about a fourth grader who gets in trouble all the time. Ooh, it's a graphic novel. Yes, Holly. Yes, graphic novels. Ugh, such a big fan. So it sounds like we're all reading during this time that we're getting, which sounds good. I've been reading Lauren Bacall's autobiography and um, <laughs> Wishful Drinking by the lovely um, and semi-recently passed Carrie Fisher. Ugh, what a wonderful, wonderful, amazing woman. So I haven't doodled a lot, but I got enough on here. But now this comes, here comes the fun part, you guys. Experimenting. Let's experiment with this baby. Let's see how far I can launch this thing to feed my cats. I don't know. We'll explore. <laughs> so let's see. I'm going to adjust my camera ever so slowly, slightly, so you can see my table. And we're going to see how far these babies can launch. All right. I've got a singular treat in here. Actually, I'm going to throw a couple. I'm going to see if I can get my catapult, my mangonel, to launch all the way across to the end of the table. I don't want to show you any BTS because my technology looks a little messy. I'm sorry. Um, but let's see how these launch, okay? So the way you're going to want to launch your catapult is probably hold down an end of it like so, like I'm holding. Crank your catapult as far as you want it. As you can see, I'm almost going full 180 right here. I can go further. I can go less. But I want to try to see how far we can launch this, baby. All right. Get ready. Get set. And launch. Whoa! <laughs> Those <laughs> went really, really far. They actually shot um, past my dining table into my living room, so much so that the cats have found it on the ground into the other area. <laughs> so um, I would say, you know what? I'm going to measure it. I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to guess. Let me go get my measuring tape and I'm going to see how far I flung my treats because my cats are laying right where the treats were. Hold on, hold on. Okay, so we are officially... Oh, that's 60 inches away. Got another. Whoop. Oh, okay. So, I had used my personal catapult that I just made with you all this morning, and it flew over 120 inches. That means this ticker tape that I have with me is 60 inches long. Oop, so you can see the whole thing. So this measured up next to each other twice at least 
was how far I was able to fling those cat treats with my catapult today, which is amazing. Now, for my advanced players <laughs> who want to actually get the math equations behind this amazing scientific phenomenon, there is behind a wonderful um, website that you can find. Um, I believe it should be the... Da, 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 da. It's the same one that had the animation on it. I'm trying to find the website for you guys now um, so I can add it into the chat for you all. Because it was a very concise and interesting exploration of catapults and the different uses for them. But I forgot to mention to everyone, well, Kate, you're asking, these seem to have existed during the early BC, AD eras. That, that to me seems like the time where the catapult was the in thing, the new in thing. How do we use catapults now? Do they still exist? Oh, and I just uploaded that link to you all in our chat if you want to see it, that website I was referencing to earlier. Well, yes, catapults still do exist in a modern way. How, you say? Well, they are now mainly used by using steam energy that is garnered from a ship's engine. Now what ship, you might ask? Well, an aircraft, aircraft carrier. Woo, that's a lot of words. Aircraft carrier, that is correct. You might have been able to see some down in San Diego if you're local down there, or there are tons everywhere. So, they use the steam engine from that huge ship that carries all of those planes and they use it to launch the airplane off of the platform, which is kind of crazy because if you see them launch, they actually fall for a little bit before they start flying again. Now, to keep this in perspective for everyone, the airplane itself weighs 71,000 pounds. That's right, let me say that again, 71,000 pounds pounds. That's a lot of weight. And they only have 300 feet to launch 71,000 pounds into the air. So what they have done, and they call it an accelerator actually, is that they use steam power from the huge engines that carry these huge airplanes to have this hook that's hooked onto the airplane and literally fling it forward as fast as they can so that it can get some air properly. And those are your modern day catapults. Now, as you saw with me earlier, experimenting with my tiny cat treat, no, no, what do we call it? Cat treat a pulp, is that it flew a lot farther than I thought it would. And I'm not the only human to learn that the hard way. Apparently people have been experimenting with catapults and they have learned a little bit the hard way that catapults launch their materials from inside at a very, very high rate. And it can sadly hurt you. So while we're making fun catapults like this, please try to not make a catapult life size, my friends, unless you have a lot of room and your mom and dad tell you it's okay. Always get your parents' permission first. Always there for them first. And then you can see what you can experiment with. Um, Stark's on it to answer your question about how measuring how I could measure after my cats ate it. Well, to be honest, they usually sit in the same place that the treats were because they expect more to fly over. And uh, just because you mentioned it, I might, I might fling some more. So let's see if I can increase my rate or if it's the same every time. So Poe is ready. You can tell. He's here. He's ready. He's launched. All right, mister. Are you ready? Are you ready to look at this launcher? He's ready. He's ready. Ready? Okay. Ready? Steady? Oh, oh! I don't know if you saw, but uh, <laughs> one of those treats kind of bounced off of Sidon's uh, cheek. Luckily, he's very fluffy. He does want the food, and he got it. <laughs> so, I hope you had fun with these catapults. Ooh, share them with us on our social media. I would love to see more. I would love to see how you experiment with them and what other games you come up with. Um, I kind of want to experiment with these and see how many M&Ms my roommate and I can catch by springing them at each other. 
so that's going to be my plan for today with this. Let's see, any last minute things about catapults that I can tell you all? Hmm, 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 hmm. Oh, that aircraft accelerator that I was just talking about, which is the modern day version of a catapult. It was created in 1952 by the British Royal Navy. Now, if you don't know much about the British Royal Navy, it was considered during its apex time, which was during the medieval times, but it was considered the biggest and most powerful and organized Navy in the world. The British had that title for the longest time until I believe America started making their own naval system. And then I believe that history rewrote itself and we, we took that title from them. Ooh, yes, yes. I just got a reminder from 2-Bit Circus. Hashtag your post 2-Bit Circus Orc so that we can find them. So we can see your catapults. Ooh, I love these names, Cat Treatapult, Crap, cat treat boucher. Ooh, I like the cat treat boucher. That's good. I like that one a lot. A lot, a lot. Um, blah, 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 blah. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found this fun. And I think that we should bring the catapult back. I don't know if it's just even for our mini enjoyment. This sounds a lot more fun. Like, I'm thinking of some games like, um, we play this version of Battleship, but instead of ships, there's little cups of glasses, and instead of throwing them, I'm thinking if we make a catapult, you have to launch the ball with a catapult, I think it'll make it ten times harder, which sounds more fun for me, because I'm competitive. <laughs> so I hope you all really enjoyed my little cat treat -a -pult with you today. If you have any comments, questions, um, please write them in the chat box. I'm going to be here for a little bit longer. Um, but I'll give you an intro to what we're doing next week. So next week, I'm actually really excited. We're going to be making cup phones. So I'm going to go through a brief history of phones and where they came from and how we got to a cell phone nowadays. And then we're going to make our own version of telecommunication and talk to each other from different rooms. Um, some of my favorite fantastical versions of cup phones are extendable ears um, from Harry Potter. Oh, a song about catapults? Do I know any songs about catapults? Uh, I do not know any songs about catapults, but I'm sure we could maybe make one together. Um, I'm thinking of something along the lines of like, um, uh, the, do you guys know a Pizza Hut, a Pizza Hut, something, something, and a Pizza Hut? But kind of on the terms of, like, um, we can do it with motion. So, like, how you can remember a trebuchet. So, uh, what motion should we come up for a trebuchet? Uh, uh, maybe swinging? So, a trebuchet, a trebuchet. A small but least to add a trebuchet. That works. Okay, so it helps you remember it. So the trebuchet is swinging. The ballista is a shot. So we'll remember that. So a trebuchet, a trebuchet, a small ballista and a trebuchet. Okay, and then we have to add, add a mangonel. Okay, so a trebuchet, a trebuchet, a tiny ballista and a trebuchet. A uh, mangonel. Maganel, a small ballista and a trebuchet. That's it. Oh, okay. So we've got our we've got our song. Okay. So this is what I'm gonna leave you on. So this is how we're gonna remember our three most important types of catapults: the trebuchet, the ballista, and the mangonel. So a trebuchet, a trebuchet, a small ballista and a trebuchet. Maganel, maganel. A small ballista and a trebuchet. So that way you'll remember it. It'll be stuck in your brain forever with the little motions. I find that that helps me out a lot so that I can remember which one it is. So trebuchets fling, <laughs> ballista shoot like a crossbow, and the mangonel, remember, it has the basket, so it has to hit that 90 degree in order to create that kinetic energy from the arm moving up into velocity with the extra kinetic energy that gets transferred into the little item that you're flinging. Because remember, energy can neither be created 
nor destroyed, it is only transferred. So that's how that ends up working mathematically. Because remember, math is always important, and math is a part of everything. And there are actual equations that you can write out to figure out potential kinetic energy. And the potential of losing any energy that might get lost in the torsion, which remember, torsion is twisting, or the traction, remember traction or tread, the traction of the machine. Some energy does get lost that way. Aww! Yes, if you write me a song, I will always sing it. This is, this is true. I will always try to sing a song if you write it for me. So, I have had the most wonderful time with everybody here teaching you about catapults. I actually learned a ton myself, which is why I love sharing it with you so much. And I now know some Latin terms, which is awesome. I find that Latin helps with other Romance languages which are Spanish, French, Italian. So sometimes the small little words mean other things later on. Oh, we had a freezing problem. Oh no, hopefully it was all good. Um, so yeah, I think that's it for me, everyone. I hope you enjoyed my little catapult class with you this morning. Um, and I hope you created your own, and I really can't wait to see your post later. You can find us on Instagram at 2bitcircus.org. You can also find us on Facebook with the same hashtag. We're always here during the week, Monday through Fridays, 10 a.m. to 11 Pacific Standard Time, and we have archived all of our classes. So that means for you, if you can't watch us right now, you can always play us again later. And we'll be working through our project playbook, which you can find right now, either in the comments below, if you are watching along, or on our website, www.2bitcircus.org. All of our playbooks are project one, our brick playbook and our steam carnival playbook are on there free for your viewing free for you to download so that you can experiment with your children yourself at home and i hope you guys are using this time to bond and find things that you can relate to whether it be about catapults and biological warfare or catapults because cats are in it so Thank you again for watching, everyone. I hope, I hope, I hope you had fun. If you're interested in building the project at home, we do have kits available at our website. Again, that's www.2bitcircus.org. And to continue to support content like this, please feel free to donate to us. We would absolutely appreciate it. And I know our sponsors, Vans, would too. Um, thank you again to Vans for their support of our streams every day to come to you guys live from our own houses. Um, don't forget to subscribe and to follow us on Twitch right here. Tune in to our next show tomorrow. And then I'll see you next week for my little um, telephone time with you guys. Have a great rest of your Wednesday. This is Kate, and she's signing off.